Okay, now we're going to go to turn two, and of course the Romans are the attackers. So once again, we start off with our CP roll. At the start of the Romans' turn, let's see what they get. Now remember, they're going to add a plus one to this roll for the general being competent. So three plus one is four, halved is two. So they're going to get two CP for the turn. Now the first thing he wants to do, one thing he definitely wants to do, is try and get his main battle line forward. Uh, so they could support their uh, velites, among other things. Uh, so yeah, he's going to do that. Now again, we're talking about a group move here. Uh, they're all heavy foot. They're going to move two normally. And there's one, two, three, four, five, including the spears, that make up that group. Now, they also have this unit of uh, impetuous uh, medium foot, which are basically the Gauls, the little Gaul allies there. Uh, these guys right here are impetuous. Now, what that means is that, like the elephants and side chariots over here with the Seleucids, these guys are unmaneuverable. So they're gonna. This whole group, if they include the Gauls, are going to pay an extra CP just to be able to move forward as a group. So we got two, and I don't want to pay that penalty right now because I've got something else up my sleeve. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the Gauls behind and we're just going to move forward this part of the group which is five units of heavy infantry, spearmen and swordsmen. And they move two in open terrain, so let's do that. And this will cost one CP. So we'll move the main battle line forward, just like so. The Romans are now on the move. We can get things done. These are their triarii, bringing up their right flank. As you can see, they avoided this rough terrain, which is good. It would have slowed them down. Uh, and again, we left the barbarians behind because it would cost us a little extra in CP because they are impetuous, which means they're hard to control. Uh, okay, so that's one CP gone. Now we have one more CP, and what I want to do now is I want to I want to move up my uh, group of velites to get within range where they could chuck their uh, javelins, which, as I told you before, is a range of one ud. So let's move them forward. They normally move three. We don't want to move the full three, of course. We want to move just far enough to get within range, which about one and a half will do. Straightforward move. Nothing fancy here. And there we go. And that would be the other CP. Now, once again, the general also has his free bonus CP, and he's going to use that to move forward. Now, he's cavalry in this case. They normally move four in the open. He's just going to move one, just enough to bring himself forward a little bit. And we'll double check the range from his velites, which is a little over six. Uds away, so he could, they could be as far as 12 before they have to pay an extra uh, command point to do something. Okay, and that ends the Romans' movement. They've spent their CP, uh, no contacts have been made, so we can go right into the shooting phase of the Romans' turn. And we're going to do that next. One thing I should point out here is in case anyone's wondering why uh, these light infantry didn't make contact, which would be a charge technically. Uh, with the elephant or the infantry here and get things going early. Well, for one thing, they're light infantry. Uh, they're armed with javelins, so they're obviously better off at shooting than they are engaging in close combat, at least. That's what we assume with light infantry anyway. Uh, in the rules, uh, these troops here, light infantry, cannot make contact, cannot charge, basically, uh, anything but other light infantry or... Uh, artillery, side chariots, as well as elephants and camps. So they could actually charge this elephant if they wanted. They can do fairly well against that elephant if they wanted to. But it isn't really a practical situation for them to get involved with because, well, we're talking about a lot of support for that elephant in the form of these pikes. It wouldn't be too healthy. And secondly, they can't charge into the pikes anyway. Uh, 
So yeah, that's another reason why I didn't do that. So I'm using them more like history would say they were used, and I'm going to move them up, launch their javelins, and try and slow down and break up this advance. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, let's get into the shooting. Now we get into the shooting step of the turn, which follows movement. And in this case, the Romans turn. Uh, we have two units of vilites that are within range and can shoot. Uh, and again, both sides actually take part in this step, just like close combat. Uh, the player whose turn it is, the Romans in this case, picks a unit to start with. He picks the order that uh, everything is resolved in. And all the effects of the shooting are assumed to take place and take effect at the end of the shooting step. So regardless of what damage is done and when it's done, it doesn't count until the end of the shooting step. So let's take a look at this. First of all, we've got range and line of sight. Well, it's pretty obvious that these two units both have range and line of sight to somebody. This is their range. It's basically one UD, which is exactly this distance right here. Uh, and this template, by the way, is a DBA template and works exactly the same way. That is, this defines the fire arc of the shooter. You put the shooting element in the middle and Everything in this area, up to its range, can be hit. And the range would be maxed out going this direction. So for javelins, that whole entire template is basically its area of effect. So any enemy touching this or within it can be targeted. And we know that's the case for both of these units. If we take our little template and we go like that, and we'll see that this unit first has the elephant and two pike units within its... Uh, arc. There's within that template. Now, what happens when you got multiple targets? It always goes on the enemy unit that is directly to the front, which would be this unit. And directly to the front is the area straight ahead of its edge. So this area here within this template. So that his, he would have to shoot at him. Now, the second unit, we had to check this because you can uh, end up shooting at the same target, in which case uh, the other units targeting that same unit at a bonus to the original shooter's uh, shooting roll. Uh, so let's check his, and we find out that this unit and this unit are both within his arc and range. Uh, and his target would be him because he's the most direct. <coughs> so he's shooting at the elephant. He's shooting at this pike block. Now we both roll dice. Add any quality, and again, there's elite, mediocre, and ordinary tropes, and based on their quality, that can modify your shooting die. And that also applies to close combat, which we'll see later. But both of these units, and the elephant in this unit, are uh, all ordinary. Well, I take that back. The elephant is actually elite, so he will get a modifier to his die roll, and I'll show how that works then during shooting. But let's start here. This unit and this unit. They're both ordinary, so there's no modifiers for that. Uh, in addition, the protection is taken into account for the target. Uh, whatever their protection rating is, and every unit in the game has a protection rating, usually from 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, it's basically a stat in a rule book. Uh, in the case of these pikemen, their protection stat is 1. So they're going to add a plus 1 to their die roll. Uh, and that's about it. The only modifiers left now are situational, and here's a list of them. shows you right there. It's not extensive. You can see if the shooter's disordered, there's a minus one. Uh, for each supporting element unit that's uh, supplementing the fire, it's plus one, max at three, blah, blah, blah. But it's all there. In this case, there is one situational modifier, and that is light horse or light infantry shooting, which both of these are light infantry. Uh, so they're gonna, he is going to suffer a minus one. And the target is going to get a plus one for his armor, or his protection, rather. And basically, uh, whoever rolls highest wins. If it's the shooter, one cohesion hit is put on the unit. If the target wins, no damage is done. Ignore it, move on to the next shot. Simple as that, folks. Uh, the maximum damage you can do from any shooting is one hit, which is one cohesion loss, and we'll talk about that later, the loss of cohesion. So let's roll the dice and apply our modifiers. See if these relites can hurt somebody with the javelins. And the Sayyid scored a 1, plus 1 for protection is 2, 
and the Romans would get five minus one because they're light infantry, which goes to four. So they're higher. So that means they hit that unit. So they caused a cohesion hit, a cohesion loss on the pikes. Now cohesion is very important in this game. Once you max out your, lose all your cohesion, you're basically routed from the table. Uh, these pikes, being heavy infantry and quite sturdy, have a nice solid cohesion rating of four. So they can take four hits on cohesion before they're removed from the table as routed. So they just took one. Uh, this also makes them disordered in close combat. If you take any cohesion losses, you're considered disordered. So this little indicator here of this little dice shows that as well as the cohesion loss. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So that's the effect of that shot. Pretty good. And also, we'll go to the next unit, which again is going to be this Vilates going against this elephant. Uh, look at our modifiers. Uh, this unit is elite in quality. Now, what that means, because he is elite, when he rolls his dice, if he scores a 1, 2, or 3, he's going to get a plus 1 on his roll. So he gets an automatic plus 1. Uh, if he rolls a 4 or better, however, he doesn't get that. Uh, mediocre troops work basically the same way, except if they roll a 4 plus, they get a minus 1 to their combat or their uh, the shooting roll. And if they roll 1 to 3, there's no modifier. So it works the same way as elites, but reversed. Uh, it's kind of interesting the way, the way that works. I actually like that very much. Uh, so yeah, uh, whatever his roll will be, if he rolls a 1 to 3, he's going to get a plus 1. So that boosts it up a little bit. His protection is 0, however, so he doesn't have a modifier for that. Uh, but the shooter, again, light infantry shooting, suffers a minus 1. And he's ordinary quality. So it's a straight up die roll for the Romans, minus one. And the elephant is a straight up roll, but if he rolls one to three, he's going to get a plus one because he's elite. And protection for him is zero. So let's roll the dice. Same situation. Ooh, and the Romans score a six, minus one is five. And the elephant rolls a five. Now he doesn't get his elite quality bonus here because he rolled four or better. So he's a straight up five. Uh, it's a tie score, which means the Romans didn't do any damage because you have to beat the opponent's roll. So no cohesion hits on the elephant. So that is the basics of shooting, and that's the effects of our Roman shooting in particular. So not bad. I did put a little loss on them. Uh, okay, folks, so that's shooting. There's nothing else on the table to shoot. So we'll move on to the next part of the turn, which would be melee, uh, again, which there is none. So we're going to go right to the next player turn, which is going to be the defender, which is the Seleucids. So they're next. They're going to roll their command points and see how they respond to this little attack. Hopefully I'll roll pretty high. Okay, folks, let's go.